let's take a look at what narrative feedback is and multiple ways to provide narrative feedback for students. But we're going to begin with talking about what's wrong with numbers and letters. So if we're thinking about how we grade, typically students get A, B, C, D, uh, or F, and uh, we don't really know what these mean. Or maybe we have a project, and for whatever reason we decide that the project is worth 100 points, and a student gets 73 out of 100. And again, we don't really know what this means. A student doesn't know what this means. Maybe she says, this puts me in the average range. But why was that? And also, why didn't the student get a chance to master what the learning outcomes are? Um, some teachers will say, well, I'll use a rubric with my grades. Um, but again, I would suggest that most students don't understand rubrics. Uh, rubrics are more for teachers than for students. And they're also very subjective. So uh, I don't like rubrics as a method for um, giving feedback to students as well. Uh, what if we tell students what they've mastered uh, or also what they have not mastered and what they uh, still need to learn? And why not give them a chance to demonstrate that they've mastered a learning outcome? Let's take a look at an example of narrative feedback. Uh, let's assume that Jennifer has completed some sort of written response about a reading selection and uh, she had to demonstrate conflict and how it was resolved and she was also asked to use some vocabulary that was a part of the selection we might give her feedback like this it tells her that she has clearly identified the conflict and how it was resolved that she has also properly used the vocabulary and and basically she has mastered this activity so instead of just placing a letter or a number on there which would be meaningless to Jennifer I've told her exactly what she has done right and what she has mastered. Now what's great about narrative feedback is that um, we can also demonstrate some learning outcomes that were not mastered. So in, in this example I'm going to tell Jennifer that she handled the conflict and how it was resolved beautifully but she neglected to add the vocabulary and you know students will do this a lot. She just She just forgot or uh, she left off that part of the assignment so what I want her to do instead of saying okay she did half well half is fifty percent and in the grade world that's an F so Jennifer fails an activity and ultimately she's gonna be punished by this what I would rather have Jennifer do is go back add the vocabulary and demonstrate to me that she has mastered it and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna ask her here to let me know when she's done this and uh, later in this presentation we'll talk about how she can show these things, where she would put it so that she could let me know. Uh, so the feedback really is important for her. It, it reiterates the instructions. Uh, it asks her to resubmit an activity rather than being punished by a grade. So let's talk about how we do this, where we put these things. A classroom site is a great place. You can, you can use a blog, you can use a wiki. Uh, there's a lot of communities out there now that are marvelous places for students. This is an all-inclusive classroom website. I do a lot of presentations on this and, and how to put everything you'll ever use in school on here. So imagine if a student had a website and at the bottom of the website you could in a comment section add feedback so here my student Nicole has written a diary project that as you can see down here she started way back in October and she's continuing to work on into January and and you see ongoing feedback okay so so down here actually Nicole responds to my feedback uh, which is really nice. You don't see the feedback I left below it, but and, and maybe you, you missed the comment here on the slide. She says, thanks for the feedback. I really needed it, which is great. Up here, uh, I'm giving some specific things about characters, uh, telling her something that she's doing, uh, asking her to, to proofread. Up here, I'm continuing to tell her what I like, that her writing is clear and passionate. Uh, we had a checklist of items. I'm asking her to check it, telling her I'd like to see more vocabulary, something we work on injecting into our writing. So there's just a, a lot of things up here, comma use, and there's a lot of very specific feedback that's ongoing. And uh, Nicole's going to truly appreciate this. And this is on her private website, so she can see it, but no one else can. 
the online message board is a terrific tool that I can use for a variety of things. I can put a classroom board where the students can supply feedback to each other, but then I use this Write to Mr. Barnes Only, which is a private board, and uh, here's a marvelous example. At, at the end of our grading period, since my school asks me to put a letter grade on a report card, even though I don't like doing this, I ask my students to evaluate themselves and I want them to go back and look at what they've done, what production did they have throughout a grading period, what kind of feedback did they get from me, did they make necessary changes to demonstrate mastery learning, and then basically they're going to grade themselves. So here on the private board where only this student can see it and I can see it, her peers can't see it so they don't have to worry about being embarrassed, uh, she says I deserve an A because I've completed everything uh, I looked at progress book, our on grade, online grade book, and she looked at comments I left. She says they were all positive. Uh, she sees solid work, excellent, uh, nicely read, good work. These are some of the comments I've left. Here's the key. I've changed everything. So anytime I said, hey, I'd like for you to go back and do something, she did it and that's one of the most important things because that truly demonstrates mastery so I love the private board it's great feedback it's great for self evaluation which is what I want my students to do reflection is such a critical part of learning um, a web-based grade program can be used for narrative feedback in place of numbers and letters so if you use an online program and you're used to going in and putting numbers and letters let's replace those with comments and, and here's an example this is a student online gradebook and you notice up here where it says mark this would be where you would put points or a letter or something like that and I'm gonna say nothing goes here I'm not gonna put anything in there I'm gonna leave that blank and uh, I'm not concerned about any of this really I'm not gonna put in if anything is missing or is late or any of that because I'm not concerned about that uh, I don't worry about late work. I want my students to demonstrate mastery. I ask them to meet certain deadlines, but I always give them a chance to go back. And, and then here's my feedback, and, and some of it's longer, some of it's shorter. So this would be a very quick activity in class. I ask for a brief response, um, give me something from some text we read. And this makes it easy, excellent responses with details from the text. You know what you've done. More specific feedback is down here, probably a lengthier activity. Uh, take a look at this. You need to be louder and more enthusiastic for an oral presentation. Not a bad commercial overall though. So, you know, th this is really important meaningful feedback for a student. Instead of sticking a letter or a number on here, uh, I'm telling the student, here's what you did that I like, and in an oral presentation you need to be louder. So rather than me going to the student and saying this or handing something back, this gives her something she can see, her parents can see online grades. So this is really powerful stuff. Uh, once again, if a final report card grade is mandated uh, by your school, uh, students have multiple places to, to look to evaluate their own work. So they can go to the message board, they can go to their student sites, they can go to an online grade book. Uh, verbal feedback, think of when you've gone to students and asked them to change something for mastery learning. And then they can go in and say, this is what I deserve based on all of that. And you know, as the teacher, you can accept their grade, which is what I do, uh, or you can uh, make it um, kind of a shared grade. You can say, I want your input, and then I'm going to take a look, and I'm going to make a final decision based on all of that feedback.